Bullshit. Pretend for a moment we've entered a parallel universe free of bullshit and full of bold solutions. That's what the No Bullshit Marketing Podcast is all about. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich, and let's cut the bullshit. Today I have Suzanne Mayer, an important member of the team and a very long-term friend here with me. So we'll be getting into that, and it is our Thanksgiving episode. So we're going to start off with our, instead of our cut the bullshit rant, we're going to go with the five Thanksgiving marketing tips, and then Suzanne and I are going to have a fun conversation. So with Thanksgiving right around the corner, here are five quick, easy to implement Thanksgiving marketing tips. Number one. Ask employees and customers what they think. Use free tools like SurveyMonkey combined with face-to-face discussions to hear what a sampling of clients and employees think. Ask two or three questions the same way and tell everybody you're gathering information to improve the company. Keep the questions systematically simple, like what's the one thing you'd change? What's the one thing you like the most? What's the biggest thing that makes us different? Number two, listen for real, to their feedback and adjust accordingly. Take the time to recap the face-to-face conversations to ensure you understand. Let customers and employees know you heard and that you're taking action. Then do it. Make positive change happen based on what you learn. Number three, tell your story by focusing on the two whys, your reason for being and their reason for buying. Create your big idea and key messages by combining the two answers, then tell your target audiences your story again and again in multiple mediums. Thank customers and employees. If you want to make a real impression, express your gratitude in a memorable and personal way, the traditional written thank you note is still your best option. Make the process relatively painless by having a supply of thank you cards that are blank on the inside. Pick up a pen and you're ready to go. Focus on what the recipient did and how it helped you. Write the way you speak. Be genuine and be ready for the recipient to thank you for the thank you. Number five, give testimonials and endorsements to people you buy from, work with, and trust. Provide specific feedback online, in person, written, on video to let those that care the most know how much you care and appreciate their efforts. The length of the message doesn't matter. It's the thought that counts. At this time, I have to say thank you for all of the subscribers to Light Reading, reading my column slash blog, and all of our subscribers here to the podcast. Thank you for reading that stuff and listening to it. It means a lot and motivates me to keep it up. I hope you find the ideas valuable. Suzanne Mayer is here for our Thanksgiving episode. And Suzanne, I want to say I want to give thanks for you. Hey, happy Thanksgiving and thanks to you as well. So you're back. You're the first repeat I'm a, a person. Repeat, I'm a repeat. I'm a repeat visitor. Yep. You're going to be. And I've been sitting in on a lot of these. So it's kind of it's cool to see how the podcast has grown. It's very cool. Thank very you. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne has helped us with a lot of the inside stuff on the podcast also Suzanne and I've had the chance to work together for such a long time and it's just we feed off of each other and a lot of times my lack of confidence uh, is boosted by you Suzanne so you've helped with the podcast when I start to doubt things I'm the wind beneath your wind yes you are <laughs> oh Bette Midler I'm your cheerleader she's singing <laughs> so a couple of things that that uh, at Mass Solutions I want to talk about that we want to give thanks for, and obviously the well before anything you, you go through the most natural thanks is for family and their health and friends and their health and all of that. But with the company Mass Solutions, we're really thankful, Suzanne, that you've helped us so much and you're a big part of our team here. In the past two or three months, we were fortunate to connect with you and have an opportunity to work together on not only just promoting mass solutions, but also the expertise that you bring on the social media side and the digital media side for our clients. It's uh, something to be thankful for. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I will tell you, like, I, I just think um, it's so important and it, it's given me some perspective as well, having known you for so long and knowing what you are out to accomplish. Um, I really, I feel like I was more than anything, just a fresh set of eyes. Um, you've got all the pieces. It was, I think all I, what I've brought to the table is a fresh set of eyes just saying, hey, you know what? 
have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? And then we've just, you know, put some tactics in place to, to implement them. But um, I think that's really important for businesses to do. I think it's really easy to kind of get into a routine and like the day-to-day admin of what you're doing. But um, just to have like a fresh set of eyes on occasion um, come into the picture to just kind of do, just do an assessment. And that's, I mean, it's really, I've been doing a lot of that, just I, assessing. I think it's valuable, like you said, because I think many companies fall prey to what we did. And that old cliche about the cobbler's son with no shoes. Yep. Most companies neglect what they're good at because they put their clients first. So we have grown organically for 10 years, and the company is great. I love the company. The team is fantastic. I'm so passionate about it. It's, it's, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But we live that cliche of the cobbler's son with no shoes because when it would come time to market us, we'd say, well, put that over here and get this done for client A. Let's yeah. get this done for client B. It's the hardest and, part. And so we have this content like light reading and the podcast and the success stories that the team has accomplished for clients. And we haven't told it enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We haven't practiced what we preached. I'm the bullhorn. That's what we need. (laughs) That's my role. I'm the bullhorn. (laughs) That's exactly what we need. So we are thankful for you coming aboard. We're also thankful for the opportunity that our clients bring. And so one of the things that you and I talk a lot about is the ideal customer profile and the big term today is personas, personas, I don't even know the correct pronunciation, but uh, when you look at that from our standpoint, you and I were talking today at lunch, we said it's really not a size of company, it's really not even an industry, it's a culture and mindset of leadership. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I I would agree. Um, (laughs) You know, there's so many, having worked in a number of different industries, businesses large and small, um really at the core is um well it's it's leadership really i think is what what pulls everything together um well what happens is we see someone like um one of our clients that's a video testimonial on our website is mark marmo of deepwell service he was a guest here on one of the earlier shows mark is a leader that comes to his vendors and makes them partners and says, this is what I'm looking to do. I'm not quite sure how to do it. What do you think in your space to do the piece that you're the expert at? That's when it really works. And if I could be so bold as to say this, when you and I worked together and you had your agency and you worked with us, whether it was at Monongahela Valley Hospital, UPMC, Duquesne, I'd like to think that's what we did. Oh, we yeah. we came, you'd come to me and I'd say, Suze, I'm really looking to achieve A and my boss really wants to achieve B. Let's get A and B done so that C is the result. How do we do that? And you'd come back with a plan and I might like 80% of them, I might tweak 10%, and you might come check, change it. That's what I mean when I say it takes leadership and the culture of the company. Because if somebody wants a commodity, if somebody wants to tell their marketing firm what to do, yeah, they should run from us because we're not going to work with them well. Exactly. I mean, you, the the most successful campaigns, marketing and or advertising campaigns, are when the client is open for new thoughts mm-hmm. and just just expanding beyond what has worked in the past Mm -hmm. i i will tell you the the cultures where i don't like i just i i run away is when i start asking questions and when you get the when you get the response oh well we don't do it like that right bad sign okay but but i have found over time what i come back is with well why why don't why don't you do that and nine times out of ten almost i would say like in every case they they don't have a response so you can break that wall down very quickly just by saying okay well then what do you say we try this what do you say we just try this the old that's how we've always done it oh it's a curse the other one of death the other one that that i've seen is um a client will be they'll leave a number of leaders will leave one company and go to an upstart that's going to be a competitor of that current stronger company and they want to do everything the way that company was done. Yeah. That's how we did it there. 
but you're starting this new venture and you have to be open to new solutions. Yeah. So had have had some co- cool podcasts. The most recent one was Nora Hewitt, mm-hmm. the winner of Face Off, Sci-Fi Network's uh, Celebrity Challenge, if you will. Uh, not Celebrity Challenge. They make them celebrities by the end of the show, but it's mm-hmm. a challenge amongst uh, special effects makeup artists. And it segues into someone we both know, and that is Douglas Education Center and Jeff Ambrescia, the CEO. And you want to talk about having a can-do attitude. Uh, Jeff is someone that grew up in Manesson, is proud of his upbringing. Manesson fell on hard times in the 80s and 90s with the coal and steel industry declining. And he took over Douglas Education Center in Manesson. And first he started to build a healthcare product because he said the old business school model wasn't going to be able to thrive long term. So he started building the healthcare product in the 90s, and that grew. And then he developed the Tom Savini Special Effects Makeup Program. And Suzanne, being a creative, you have to love that whole concept that they're teaching in Manesson, Pennsylvania. They're teaching oh. people to be working on the movies and the videos. It's and the an makeup. art form. It's an art form. And it is it is something, it's, it's one of those things when you step out of this market, it's something that this region is known for is – that I call it horror film and I'm such a lightweight when it comes to things, but that it, the Tom Zavini has made this region known, known for that. It's, it's very cool. It's very cool. Douglas has, I think, uh, students from all 50 States and like 15 countries, but let's go down this path a little bit. There's a lot of great things in our region that people don't quite realize how well we're known for, outside of the region and Douglas Education Center is one example of that and I mean obviously the big healthcare players uh, are, are well known throughout this region but you've been really instrumental in booking guests for the show uh, we have a couple in the future coming out uh, Lynn Brusco and uh, and Abby Goldstein but talk about how when you see some of these leaders and you think wow these are some really strong leaders and they're here in Pittsburgh and their stories deserve to be told. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Lynn, and, and I actually, I met Lynn through um, an organization that I'm with here in Pittsburgh, the um, Athena Awards, which is, it's an international thing, but Pittsburgh has a really, really strong chapter. And it's um, it's basically honoring um, women business leaders for showing, show, uh, showing um, leadership, mentorship, and um, con- community service. And Lynn was the recipient of that award this past year. So um, I produced uh, the video for the awards, and I had the great honor of meeting um, all of the finalists. There were five um, of the the main uh, the main finalists, and then three young recipients. Which that in itself is is amazing. That the talent in this market, like business leaders, women under the age of 35, unbelievable. Um, there are so many great stories that, to tell. The, working on this Athena project um, really opened my eyes to that. Um, but just, it, it, it's kind of the way I do business. Like, I just, I love meeting people and I love different people's perspective. And from a business standpoint, there are so many there's so many great stories out there to be told and how people um, have gotten to the place where they are um, and the ones that I really enjoy the most are those who they recognize where they are and and what they do to help pull others up and learn. Um, I, I mean, I think that that, in my opinion, is the the most ideal um, team building relationship in a, in a business in a business environment. So, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great stories in this market and and beyond. That's Suzanne Mayer, the wind beneath the wings of the No <laughs> Bullshit Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich, and Suzanne and I are talking about. The, the great things in Pittsburgh and the stories that we really want to tell. And the format of this show starts off with the Cut the Bullshit rant, which gives me a chance just to have a platform to kind of bitch a little bit. But 
Then it goes right into asking the, the guests their career path. And I find that even though I know the guests most of the time, some of them just meeting for the first time, but most of the time I know them, I'll hear their story and there'll be so much in that that I didn't even realize. I'm thinking, I've known this person 15 years. So that's why that's the opening question because what you said is so true. You oh, have yeah. Lynn's background. Uh, Lisa Lenahan was a finalist. Uh, she's fantastic. You have all these people that have this background that are there's so much that they've done and that first question gets right to the heart of it. There's a reason why people are where they are today and that backstory is the most interesting part. It, I mean, it, it really is. I mean, we've all had we've all had ups and downs throughout our, our careers, and, and at the time, you just think like, oh, you know, it's this is the end. This is, but my gosh, you know, you you look back on it just a few months later, and you know, it, once you've you know pulled yourself together and rebound, like you learn from all those experiences, and it just helps to shape you. And I think people really respect that, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it's wear and tear and lessons learned. One of our guests is Chef Jacqueline Wardle, who was on Cutthroat Kitchen. And she's great. She yeah. was a great guest. She's maybe definitely early 20s. She's opening her new restaurant uh, built around toast. Mm -hmm. The whole concept's around toast in the small one galley. And she's opening here in like a week or so. So we have to make sure we put that on our to-do list so we can go oh, and yeah. pop in for the... Uh, the, the, the grand opening, but I thought she was a, a wonderful guest. That was the first time I'd really met her, talked to her on the phone a few times, set up the meeting, and she was a really enjoyable guest, brought some real interesting perspectives. Well, that's what I think's been interesting about the show this far is like the diversity in the, I know I, I kind of jumped on you for like, where are, the, where are the women? Where are the women? And so we started working on getting some women on the show, but um, th the backgrounds and very diverse and very interesting stories. So it, it has been, it's been, it's been a blast. And I think opening up with having the guests talk about their career arc, their journey has been great. And then you go right into asking people when they saw bullshit and mm -hmm. had to call it out. And some of the answers we've heard there have been excellent too, because you're hearing all these different dynamics of when they thought something was BS. <clears throat> then we asked them to tell us when they were a BSer and, that's really cool too because you get the humbling aspect oh, of it. Oh yeah, yeah. And they start pouring out the details of saying, "Yeah, this is when I screwed up, and I could have did better at this." So it's been it's been a really good vehicle, and I think podcasts. Uh, for about two years, I've been debating over the last year and a half, I should say, to do this because I just felt it was a good vehicle for us as a company and for me personally. But there were over a billion podcasts downloaded in the last year, and it's just an absurd amount of unique users every month, millions. It is a vehicle that gives you a chance to, someone just sent me an email about the Nora Hewitt show and said, wow, got to basically listen to her for an hour mm -hmm. over the two episodes. How cool was that? And that's really what it comes down to is there are shows to talk about entertainers and let them talk for a half hour. There are shows to talk to athletes for about a half hour. But how many shows are there to talk about primarily Pittsburgh business people or Western Pennsylvania business people? Not that we won't put someone from outside the region. I'd be happy to. But it's primarily been Western Pennsylvania people. And they get a chance to tell their story for really two episodes that end up being almost an hour. There's nothing better. Well, there's maybe a few things better. But there's nothing better than a good conversation. And I think that is that's the. That's the sec the success behind podcasts. I think is just I think people really enjoy good conversations, and I, I think this is a this is a platform for uh, good business conversations that kind of bubbles things down. Your I love your systematically simple. I yes. mean that kind of just that yes that's kind of what this show does. It just it bubbles things down to the you know to the roots of people and, and their thoughts on their views on business and not just marketing business in general. Well, that's the thing I had a friend of mine who said, well, I don't do a whole lot of marketing. Why would I be on the show? And I said, because it's about leadership and yeah. communication. Oh yeah. And this guy's a heck of a leader and he knows how to communicate. And I said, so it's not worth whether you spend 2 million on advertising or whether you have seven people in your marketing department, five in your sales department, it's about how do you lead and how do you communicate? And that's the big thread that each guest has had. They've, they've shown leadership and communication and they were humble enough to point out because we go through and ask them when they were a bullshitter, but then we ask them, give us a tip 
or a tool for the audience. And then, of course, we go into the pop culture segments, which I think are the most popular ones. Uh, but Meanwhile, anybody who says like they don't, they can't call bullshit on themselves, bullshit. That's what I say. <laughs> That's exactly right. We should have brought our little bullshit button, folks. We have a, oh, a button in the conference room for yeah. when, whenever anybody in on the team or a client is out of line. You just push and it gives you the, That's bullshit. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Dave. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, Suzanne. <laughs> and thank you, our audience, for listening to the No Bullshit Marketing Show. Check out BoldSolutionsNoBS.com for show notes and other marketing and messaging resources. Sign up for Light Reading. We have over a million people have read Light Reading. It's meant to be read in two minutes or less, and it should shine bright ideas for you. Go to MassSolutions.biz and sign up for Light Reading. And other than that, just remember to answer those two why questions, your reason for being and their reason for buying, make it the what's the big idea, build your messaging around that. It's all about bullshit.